Hi, my name's Christian, and today we're starting a new series called Relationships. Now, we all have important relationships in our lives, whether it's a family member or a sibling or a teacher, and sometimes when those people aren't around us, we can start to feel a bit lonely. But did you know that we are actually never alone and that God is with us wherever we go? So let's watch today's God story and learn more about that. <laughs> what do you call a religious sheep, a Baptist? <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Jen. I'm so excited to be here with you today. I want to start today by telling you a story of a time that I got to travel to the other side of the world to a country called Laos. I went there with my church and I got to visit my sponsor child. It was a lot of fun. But there were some times when I felt a little bit alone when I was over there. See, I went with a group from my church, which is great. But in the night times, we all went to our own hotel rooms and I wasn't traveling with like any family or any close friends. And so I was in a hotel room by myself. And I actually didn't really like that at night. I like being around people. And it was a little bit scary to be honest, sitting in the hotel room by yourself and hearing different noises of things outside that you aren't used to hearing in Canada. But but in those moments, I had to just remind myself that God was there with me. As much as he is with me here when I'm home in Canada, he was with me in this faraway country as well. And this reminds me of today's big idea, that God is with us wherever we go. So today we're gonna to talk about a guy named Jacob. Now previously we've talked about Abraham. So Abraham was the father of Isaac and Isaac was the father of Jacob. So Abraham's actually Jacob's grandfather, which is kind of cool. Now Jacob had a twin brother named Esau and as many brothers do, they didn't all always get along very well. Sometimes they fought over stuff and just argued about things. So one day Isaac was getting ready to give the family blessing to Esau, the older of the two sons. Now giving of the blessing was really important in Old Testament times, but Jacob did something a little bit tricky. He actually tricked his father into thinking that he was Esau. So Isaac was a pretty old guy. He couldn't see very well. And so Jacob went to see his dad and made him believe that he was Esau. And so Isaac unknowingly laid his hands on Jacob and gave the blessing to him thinking it was Esau. Definitely. Esau was mad at this. And so Jacob ran to get away from the anger of his brother. He went to a place called Haran. Now, even though Jacob had done wrong here, God was still with him as he traveled. So we're gonna pick up this story in Genesis chapter 28. Jacob reached a certain place and stopped for the night. The sun had already set. He took one of the stones there and placed it under his head. Then he lay down to sleep. Man, a stone sounds like not a very comfortable pillow at all. So in a dream, he saw a stairway standing on the earth. Its top reached to heaven. The angels of God were going up and coming down on it. The Lord stood above the stairway. He said, I am the Lord. I am the God of your grandfather Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your children after you the land on which you are lying. They will be like the dust of the earth that can't be counted. They will spread out to the west and to the east. They will spread out to the north and to the south. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you and your children after you. I am with you. I will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Wow, that was an amazing dream that Jacob had, right? And this promise that God gave to Jacob is actually the same promise that he gave to Abraham and that he gave to Isaac. And really, it's the same promise that God gives to us too. God promises us that he will be with us wherever we go. So let's read what happens next. Jacob woke up from his sleep. Then he thought, the Lord is certainly in this place and I didn't even know it. Jacob was afraid. He said, how holy this place is. This must be the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head. He set it up as a pillar and he poured oil on top of it. Now in these days, it might sound kind of funny that they poured olive oil over a rock, but that was their way of reminding themselves that God had spoken to them there. Now today we don't do that, but we do other things. We pray and we thank God when he has done awesome things in our lives. Then Jacob made a promise. He said, may God be with me. May he watch over me on this journey I'm taking. May he give me food to eat and clothes to wear. May he do as he has promised so that I can return safely to my father's home. Then you, Lord, will be my God. This stone I've set up as a pillar will be God's house, and I'll give you a tenth of everything you give me. 
It's a pretty cool story. So Jacob knew that God would be with him and he asked God to watch over him on this journey. So I love this story because Jacob thought that he was alone in this faraway place, but God came to him in a dream to remind him that he was with him wherever he went. You know, when I was in Laos, like I was saying, I felt pretty alone too, but God was with me there in the same way that he was with Jacob in today's Bible story. So as Jesus followers, we can know that God is always with us. This coming week, whether you're going to school, whether you have to go to a doctor's appointment, whether you're going to play a hockey game, whatever it is you're doing, God God is going to be with you. See, just as God the Father is in heaven with Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit is on earth with us. He is with us always. So remember today's big idea that God is with us wherever we go. Well, it's been so fun hanging out with you guys today. I can't wait to see you next time. Until then, bye. Turn to the person next to you and discuss these questions. Oh, 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 Willem, Willem, uh, what do I do? Get the net! Ah. Question time! In today's story, Jacob was sneaky and tricked his father and brother to get his father to eat with him, bless him, swim with him, or hug him. Bless him! Jacob fled and when he wanted to sleep, used something strange as a pillow. Jacob used a shoe, Suitcase, sausage, or stone? Stone! Jacob had a dream where he saw a stairway standing on earth with its top reaching heaven. What else did he see? Angels going up and down, God standing beside the stairway, God saying, I am with you, or all of the above. All of the above! Game time! Bike Bark! How many times can you say the key verse before the time is up? Say it with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. In all your ways, remember Him. Then He will make your paths smooth and straight. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. Get ready! 3, 2, 1, go! Wow, that was an amazing dream that Jacob had. But did you know that God doesn't always speak to us in these mind-blowing ways and that he is still always by our side? Let's check in with Willem to see what God showed him about that. Hi, I'm Willem. I like art, making things, getting out into nature, and I really like music. And I've kind of got a problem with collecting instruments. Growing up, I was always surrounded by music. It was always kind of playing in the house. Um, anytime we had any sort of work to do, we always had music on and we had it cranked up so we could get in the mood. Whenever we would go on road trips uh, and a cool song came on, our parents would always ask the kids in the back, you know, who sings this? Of course we had no idea because we were kids, um, but that really got us started thinking about music and like really listening to it. My parents always encouraged me to keep learning music, but they always reminded me that I should be using these gifts to glorify God. That's when I got involved with praise teams at my church and at my school. There was a big difference between the praise team and just my high school rock band, and that big difference was that the focus wasn't about us, you know? It was all about glorifying God. And when all of that came together and you're part of a team in front of a big group of people and you're all praising God, it's incredible. There's just this feeling and electricity in the air and you almost can't describe it. It's just a feeling you get and it's awesome.
but we're not perfect. Things don't always go exactly to plan. You know, sometimes you could be missing your cues or rushing or falling behind or too focused on your own self-image rather than helping other people praise. It can be a really rough feeling to look out into the crowd and seeing people having a hard time getting into the spirit of worship. That's just a tough thing to face. When I was in high school, our praise team had an awesome opportunity to go into a studio and record a worship album. While we were rehearsing, one of the recording artists came to us and gave us some advice. They said that while you're playing, you might get this hollow, tingly feeling, and that's just God trying to fill you with his spirit. While we were recording, we were doing one song, and I was on drums, and the first two takes, I was a mess. I was rushing, I was falling behind, I was missing the cymbals, I dropped my sticks. It was a disaster. And as we were about to go into that third take, I felt that kind of numbness, tingly feeling, like my arms had fallen asleep, but not. And I just thought to myself, okay, gun, let's do this. And I closed my eyes and I just stopped thinking. And it worked, it just, it just worked. I felt the spirit flowing through me and I just played the best I ever had. I didn't have to think about what I was playing and I was just totally lost in the flow of the music. From that day on, I realized that God is always with us and like the loving father that he is, he's always ready to help us and to fill us with his strength when we need it. And it's not just music. God's with us everywhere we go throughout our whole lives. Whether you're at school, at home, hanging out with friends, God's always with us and he's always ready to fill us with his spirit. Wow, Willem can play so many instruments. He could be a band all on his own. But what a concept that when we don't feel at our best or don't see the answers laid out in front of us, let God take over because he is always with us and can help us in any situation, wherever we go. Let's break into our small groups and see what this looks like in our own lives. 